Hey guys, today in this video we're going to find out can this credit card shaped Fresno lens that fits handily in your wallet actually light a fire. It works like a magnifying glass. Um, and I've used it before to kind of get some stuff smoking just real quick. I'm like, oh, okay, I assume it would work. And then I thought, let's do an actual dry run. Let's see if I can actually light a fire with this. And I actually had some difficulties with every type of material. So I thought, let's set up the most generous test ever on a 92 degree day. Yes, it's in Wisconsin. Yes, it's in August, but still, I mean, the UV index is pretty high today. It was extremely hot sitting out here trying to do this. So that's the Fresno lens. You can see it kind of focuses stuff. That's the uh, holder right there. So I brought out some stuff that definitely can light on fire. Let's see if we can get it going. Oh, and that pile, by the way, is some shredded dried cypress mulch. Yes, yes, socks with sandals, whatever, it was near the door, okay? I, I was burning sunlight here. Uh, speaking of burning things, let's try this uh, just standard white piece of paper, just thin, uh, I don't know, 22 pound normal high brightness paper. Now the problem with this is no matter how I focus it, it doesn't do anything because the paper is so unbelievably white. So I thought, okay, well, I mean, let's just prove that it works. Let's uh, put it on a piece of cypress, obviously way too big to light on fire, but I um, wanted to practice the focusing here. It also helps if you don't put your thumb over 10% of it, but uh, I improved the technique as the video goes. So you can see we got a little smoke there, you know, it's hot enough. It, it functions at a basic level. So I thought, okay, let's make it black because black actually absorbs the sunlight. Now wait till you see the difference here. This is insane. Also, uh, I got a little little stuff on the uh, lens there, but uh, let's see. This uh, basically goes right up. I mean, look at that. It, it's just smoking. It burns it right out instantly like a laser beam. Unfortunately, it doesn't get to an ignition temperature. Now, a lot of paper like this, the real kind of, you know, densely stamped printer style paper, like laser jet paper, it isn't as flammable as you think. I mean, if you light the corner of it and kind of tip it upside down, it actually takes a while for the, the flames to spread. So, um, fire resistant paper, probably not a great idea. So I thought, let's just take some thin, ultra dry cypress uh, pieces here, the thinnest we can get where, you know, if you hit that with a lighter, you've got a fire instantly and just try and directly light it on fire because it might get hot enough. You know, it might be small enough. The problem is with this, um, one, I just don't believe that this, uh, beam gets hot enough. Um, I mean, you can see it smokes pretty good, but still, and, uh, it actually can't focus to small enough of a beam or like a, a dot to, uh, entirely hit something that thin and then if it was thicker like thick enough like maybe two three millimeters you know um, good eighth of an inch or so uh, then that would be too big to light on fire so I'm starting to have my doubts about this it just doesn't seem to work and uh, I'm hitting you know some pretty good spots here getting some really good quick aggressive uh, smoke but it's just not hitting ignition temperature or it may be ignition temperature where it's like smoking it into coals, but it's not uh, a big enough area to catch or to produce, you know, large flames. So next up, we've got paper towel and receipt paper. Very flammable. Paper towels are unbelievably flammable because of their gaps. Uh, they kind of got like an air gap that's supposed to, uh, you know, trap water. Um, so first we're going with the receipt paper. It's just really thin. Now it is called thermal paper. A laser actually kind of burns into it and then that's what changes the color. So the uh, printers don't actually require ink. Wonderful invention. Um, I don't know if the paper is particularly, um, fireproof though, you know, cause yeah, it gets hot. You probably wouldn't want it lighting on fire. Um, but I've lit it up with a, a lighter and it just goes. So that didn't work even with the, uh, Sharpie on it. Um, you can see it's, it's getting pretty aggressive there. I mean, we're, we're getting a good beam here on the uh, paper towels. I really thought this would work because the smoke was just pouring out of it. It even had like some little like poofs uh, pushing the smoke out of the way. So I thought, let's try an even bigger strip because I almost got it. Um, I'm starting to wonder if this would work in like Arizona, but you really wouldn't want to be sitting out in the sun as long as I was. I got pretty, pretty sweaty, pretty burned. And that's not something you want to do in a survival uh, scenario here. I'd rather just flick a lighter and... You know, there you go. You know, <laughs> I think even like a, like a ferrite rod would be a lot faster than this. So you can see I'm really getting some good burn there, but it, it must just not be hot enough. So nothing in nature would be more flammable than a paper towel, in my opinion. Maybe pine needles I didn't have any. So I thought, let's let's start getting unreasonable. Let's say I had some 91% isopropyl alcohol and I spilled it all over my paper towel and then still painted it black a little bit here. So uh, there we go. Get some of that going. Ink and... Uh, Ice probably don't mix so good, but I, I put it right on the edge of the wetness and it seems like somehow like the reflectiveness of it being a clear liquid are actually preventing it from doing anything. 
I really thought this would work. I thought that little burst of smoke right there, boom, right into the vapors. And uh, alcohol lights pretty easily. I mean, uh, I'm not sure if like a kerosene or like a thicker oil hydrocarbon thing or like uh, lighter fluid, which is uh, hexane as opposed to gasoline, which is octane. So it's a uh, 25% thinner hydrocarbon chain. So it vaporizes really easy. It's still a lot heavier than alcohol and doesn't vaporize as well. So I don't know. Maybe it does. I don't know. Probably should have tried it, but I, I don't think anything would work. So I thought, well, I got the wood wet. I mean, let's try that. That's fairly dark wood. Um, got a little smoke there, but how this is not lighting the alcohol vapors is just beyond me. I really thought this would work. <laughs> so I'm starting to have my doubts about this uh, lens here. Um, I might've been getting a little bit frustrated at this point. So, you know, just, just totally not because I was mad and just want to see some fire and just to prove that it's extremely flammable. Um, I lit it on fire with a little jet lighter there. Okay. If it can't light a candle with a black wick surrounded by white fuel, I don't know what will. Yes. It's still on fire. No, I didn't notice. Yes. I burned my hands. There we go. <laughs> All right. So it's actually really hard to target the wick because one, I can't get the beam small enough. And, uh, two, uh, it is turbo black. I mean, one of the blackest, least reflective substances that exists is basically like charred, you know, charcoal, anything burnt, something like that. So it is really hard to target it. The funny thing is I'm actually well, uh, melting the wax under it and just getting not much, not much results. So I had some trouble targeting the actual wick. So I thought let's get like some context behind it. All right, so theoretically, I'll be able to use the paper to trace where the beam is and hit the wick directly, and these results are spectacular. Look at that. All right, we have got mad smoke. I mean, the smoke is just pouring out of there. I thought, okay, this will light up any second. It's actually not really burning the paper that much because it's white. Uh, that, that didn't help, but uh, I just kept it at the same level because why not? I mean, I was already targeting the wick, and uh, I think I just kind of lost the target a little bit there. You could tell it's very aggressively pouring out smoke. But the fact that it's turning into smoke but not flames, that is just the pure indication that it is not hot enough. So I suspect that if this lens was maybe 50% or like 100% bigger, or if it was like a true magnifying glass, which, you know, shatters, I wouldn't exactly put that in your emergency pack, but eh, if you can pad it, I suspect I wouldn't have had as much of a problem. I think this is a really stupid way to light a fire. No matter how hot the beam is, it's too thin. You're, you're just not going to get that spectacular, amazing flare up that you would with um, an actual coal touching multiple things that touch other things that interact with the air and produce a flame. So at this point, my camera was giving me the uh, heat warning and I was getting extremely hot and sweaty. So I, I came up with one more extremely stupid idea and went back outside for it. Oh, wait, that's one stupid idea from now. I tried shoving the um, thinnest... Uh, mulch I could get in there into the wax to see if we could just get like a multi-level thing going. Uh, maybe it would burn better than a, like a cotton wick. Probably not, but I thought, oh, it's worth a shot. Uh, basically I didn't get any results with it. So, you know, once again, let's get the lighter out. And, uh, it turns out like paraffin coated, uh, wood doesn't burn very well. <laughs> Wouldn't have thought, but yeah, wax is a very, very, very thick, um, hydrocarbon material. Um, I don't remember how long the chain usually is. It's, it's like 40 or something compared to gasoline, like I said, which is eight. It basically doesn't vaporize at all. It's very difficult to light on fire, um, more so than even like a petroleum jelly product, which a lot of people use to light fires. That's obviously thinner. I mean, that's more of a paste. You look at like uh, gasoline, which is like a thin but heavy liquid. And then you look at wax, which is a solid that melts under, you know, vaguely high temperatures. You're way up there in the hydrocarbon scale. So yeah, I should have known this, but it's extremely difficult to light wax on fire. So what material would light on fire at about, I'll say 120, 130 degrees? <laughs> Match heads, of course. Just a basic little amount of friction will light them on fire. So let's see if this works. I mean... Obviously, there it goes. <laughs> that didn't take long. So if you already have matches, I would just use the matches. Um, but I guess if they got wet, maybe you might be able to ignite them with a the lens. I don't know. This lens weighs almost nothing, but it's also entirely completely worthless. So what did I put it in my emergency pack? Absolutely not. In fact, I'm taking it out of my wallet. Let me know if you live in a much more uh, southern longitude and you uh, sat out in the strongest sun you've ever had and tried one of these uh, credit card size Fresno lenses. And uh, I don't know if you guys are interested, I might repeat it with like a fairly large magnifying glass if I can find one. Otherwise, yeah, mark this one as debunked. I don't think the portable Fresno lenses are good at all. I don't think they're actually capable of lighting a fire under any circumstances. 
So don't fall for that scam. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next video.